Welcome to Recap King. In this video, we will explain mechanic, resurrection. This movie tells the story of a contract killer forced to assassinate three men and make them look like accidents by his arch rival, who kidnaps his girlfriend and threatens to kill her. Can the assassin complete his mission and save his lover back? Let's find out in Mechanic, Resurrection. The Mechanic, Resurrection begins by showing Arthur Bishop enjoying his free time. Since faking his own death, Arthur has been living a quiet life in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, changing his identity to the name Santos. One day, Arthur is visited by a woman named Renee, who knows his true identity as Arthur Bishop, an assassin. Renee then explains that her master, Crane, wanted Arthur to kill the three targets and disguise their deaths as accidents. Because Arthur is reluctant to accept the offer, Renee intends to kill him. Renee's men then came and they were involved in a fierce fight there. Arthur then jumped onto the cable car, but Renee and her henchmen continued to chase him until he finally managed to escape by jumping onto paragliding in the air. Because his hiding place is known, Arthur was forced to leave Brazil and flee to Thailand. There, he meets his friend, a woman named May. May then took Arthur to one of the beach houses on her resort island and allowed him to stay there for a while. Sometime later, May came to Arthur and asked him to help a woman beaten by a man on a boat. May knew the woman as Gina Thornton because Gina had previously been to her resort. At first Arthur was reluctant to help Gina because he didn't want to get involved in other people's business. However, after being pressed by May, he became livid. Arthur then visited the boat on which Gina was riding and tried to help her when a man named Frank was about to rape her. Arthur and Frank get into a fight that ends in Frank's death. He then set fire to the boat to eliminate traces. May then takes Gina to a beach house so she can rest. However, Arthur soon learns that Gina is connected to Crane and concludes that Crane deliberately uses Gina as bait to get him out of his hiding place. Arthur points a gun at Gina and forces her to tell her about Crane's plan. Gina tries to snatch the gun from Arthur's hand but fails. In the end, she admits that she did work for Crane, though she was forced to do so because Crane blackmailed her. Arthur then asks Gina to take him to Crane to kill him, but Gina refuses because she doesn't know Crane's whereabouts either. The next day, May treats the bruises on Gina's body with traditional medicine, saying that her father is a healer. Gina lived on May's resort island for a while, just like Arthur. One day, Arthur approached Gina while sunbathing on the beach. He asked about how Crane blackmailed her. Gina reveals that she owns a children's shelter in Cambodia and that Crane once killed one of her employees when she refused to work for him. Crane then threatens to kill the children who live there if she persists in refusing to work with him. Gina is forced to comply with Crane's wishes for the safety of the children and the employees who work there. After hearing Gina's explanation, Arthur promised to help her solve her problem with Crane. Arthur realized that Crane's men were spying on them. He then deliberately took Gina's hand because he concluded that Crane might have anticipated that he and Gina would become romantically involved. After that, he would kidnap Gina to force Arthur to take on the assassination job. Over the next few days, Arthur and Gina seem to get closer and show that they really are in love with each other. As expected, Crane's men rushed over there and kidnapped them. Arthur and Gina are taken to Crane's headquarters, where Crane has taken Gina hostage to make sure Arthur gets his job done. Crane gives a file containing information on the targets that Arthur must kill. The first target was an arms dealer named Krill, who is being held in prison in Malaysia. Crane warns Arthur that Krill is being held in a maximum prison in the middle of a shark-infested ocean. Not only that, Krill is also always closely guarded by his men for a full 24 hours. Of course this did not make Arthur afraid. He gets himself imprisoned by posing as a fugitive from the local police and a drug dealer. After successfully getting into the same prison as Krill, he immediately sought information about Krill from other prisoners. It is known that Krill once massacred the family of one of his henchmen and made the henchmen want to kill him to avenge the death of his family. After watching Krill and his minions for a long time, the moment he had been waiting for had finally happened. The henchman tries to kill Krill while he is off guard, but Arthur managed to kill him right in front of Krill. Seeing Arthur had saved his life, Krill then invited him to enter his private quarters. Krill reveals that he is always the target of murder in prison, so he needs full escort. As Krill rants about what he will do when he is released from prison, Arthur strangles him to death. After that, Arthur drinks Krill poison to make his death look like an accident. Arthur then blows up the prison walls and free falls into the sea in the chaos, where Crane's ship awaits him. After successfully killing Krill, Arthur's next target is Adrian Cook, a Sydney-based billionaire and former trafficker of underage sex workers. Not only that, Adrian is also an arms dealer, just like Krill. Adrian lives in a luxury penthouse apartment with very tight security and a swimming pool at an altitude. Arthur pretends to be buying an apartment near Adrian's unit. After that, 
he duplicated the key and studied the floor plan of the apartment building. The next day, Arthur passes through the apartment's tight security and enters an apartment unit with a duplicate key. With his skills as an experienced hitman, he then creeps up to Adrian's apartment unit, punches a hole in the bottom of the swimming pool glass, and inserts a small tube containing a chemical, which causes the glass to crack. While Adrian is swimming, he makes the crack in the glass grow bigger. The water jutted down, making Adrian trapped in a powerful whirlpool that made it difficult for him to get out of the pool. Adrian then fell to his death, just as Arthur came out of the apartment building and no one suspected him. While relaying the details of the third target, Crane allowed Arthur to talk to Gina via video call. Gina is seen in Crane's ship. Gina then said that her watch didn't work. After all, it was a code for Arthur to identify Crane's boat number that was visible behind her. After knowing the number, Arthur contacted the port and found out the ship's location where Gina was being held. The next day, Arthur then headed to the location by helicopter. He fights Crane's men, trying to save Gina. However, Arthur is outnumbered and caught by Crane's men. Upon learning of Arthur's actions, Crane is furious and demands that he finish the final murder within 24 hours or else he will kill Gina. The last target that Arthur must kill is Max Adams, an arms dealer who controls the market in America, who is currently in Varna, Bulgaria. On the other hand, Max, who had learned that Krill and Adrian had been killed by someone, immediately ordered his men to increase security at their base. While planning to kill Max, Arthur realizes that his last target is Crane's only major competition in arms sales. Since it was impossible to break into Max's base, Arthur shot one of the guards on the roof. As the guards leave their post to help their comrade who has been shot, he sneaks in and blows up the lift access road so the other guards can't follow him. Knowing that someone is trying to break into the headquarters, Max immediately secures himself to his office which has maximum security. Unexpectedly, Arthur was already waiting for Max's arrival at his office, pointing a gun. Max didn't seem panicked when someone pointed a gun at him and asked Arthur why he had come to him. Arthur reveals about Crane's plan to eliminate Max and tells him that he wants to work with him to get rid of Crane. Max immediately knew that Arthur had killed Krill and Adrian. Max, who really intends to be the only arms dealer who controls the entire area, of course does not waste his offer of cooperation from the hitman. Max and Arthur then plan to fake Max's death by blowing up the base and eliminating his tracks in the ocean. The news of the massive explosion and the death of Max Adams immediately became the focus of many parties including Crane who watched it on television. In fact, Arthur managed to bring Max to a remote island to hide. Arthur then called Crane and said that his work was done. But Crane said that his work was only considered finished if he had confirmed Max was dead by looking at his corpse. Arthur, who anticipated this, then asked Crane to come to the submarine pen to see for himself Max's body. Thinking that it was a trap, Crane ordered his mercenaries there while he would watch them through the camera. On the other hand, Arthur started to make preparations in the submarine pen to deal with Crane's henchmen who numbered quite a lot, so that he wouldn't be overwhelmed and had time to save Gina. Not long after, Crane's men arrived there and were immediately met with resistance from Arthur. It didn't take long for Arthur to decimate Crane's mercenaries and swim towards the ship where Gina was being held hostage by Crane. Elsewhere, Crane who knows that his men have been defeated, then orders his men on the ship to carry out tight security and move Gina to another place. Meanwhile, Arthur manages to infiltrate Crane's ship and can paralyze Crane's men. Seeing Arthur who had come to save her, Gina tried to rebel, but she was shot instead. Knowing Arthur has defeated all of his men, Crane then activates a bomb that will blow up the entire ship and intends to escape. But of course Arthur didn't let Crane just run away. After learning that the ship is about to explode, he kills the remaining Crane's mercenaries, then overpowers Crane and secures him to the boat with a metal chain. With only a few seconds left before the explosion, he secures Gina to an emergency release pod. Not long after, the ship exploded and killed everyone. The scene then switches to showing Gina being rescued from the emergency release pod and looks very shocked when she finds out that there are no survivors from the ship's explosion. Sometime later, it was seen that Gina had returned to Cambodia and was taking care of her children's shelter. One day, Gina looks gloomy because she is still thinking about Arthur, who was allegedly killed in the explosion on the crane ship some time ago. However, her face instantly turned cheerful when she saw Arthur standing in front of her without the slightest injury. The scene then switches to showing Max in his office. He was seen investigating the internal structure of the crane, which revealed a fire-resistant watertight chain locker in anticipation of a possible explosion. Max discovers how Arthur survived but destroys the evidence as a token of gratitude for sparing his life and enabling him to monopolize the arms trade by taking market share from Crane, Krill, and Adrian. This film clearly teaches that to save someone who is so important to us, it takes effort and ingenuity.
When Arthur works with Max, he proves that he is not only a hitman who can kill his enemies quickly, but he can also use his ingenuity to save the woman he loves.